Good afternoon, everyone. This is George Kadwaki from Brazil with the support from my informal agent, Bruno Lapa, that put me in contact with <laughs> Bolu, his former teammate. Bolu, welcome to my channel. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. It's Friday in Brazil. We, we say sesto, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> thank God it's Friday. Yeah, yeah. It's, Bruno always <laughs> sends me some stuff that says that. <laughs> some sesto as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sesto is always a good moment. Yeah. How is this still for you? The season's beginning, a new team, a new club, a new city for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New everything. Um, it's good. It's a fresh start. Um, Florida, the weather's beautiful. Miami's nice. Um, Popolo, well-known city, which is good. Uh, we 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 play tomorrow, our second game of the season. We started off with a win, so things are good right now. Hopefully, we can keep it going. I get the impression. Well, I've been following Miami City for a long time since it's a, it's a Brazilian club, right? Ricardo mm -hmm. Silva has created as just like Orlando City. So people yeah. in Brazil tend to follow it a bit more. Mm -hmm. I get always the get impression that Miami C FC is a team that has high expectations for every tournament. Absolutely. Is that the uh, impression you get as well? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think last year they fell a bit short of the expectations that they had, um, not making a playoff. So I think there's a team that has a lot of success. They've had a lot of success in, in kind of like the lower level of soccer in America. So there's that pressure and um, that expectation that they, they, they need to get back to winning ways and get back to where where they once was. Well, and despite you have, how, how long have you been in Miami so far? It's not that long, um, right? No, not that long. So I moved, actually moved here January 30th. So not I very long. I get curious. Is there any type of rivalry with Inter Miami? Um, no, because I get Inter Miami is a fairly new club. Um, obviously this is their second season. So I don't think there's a rivalry yet. I think there's always, cause we're kind of the underdogs and, um, this club has been around longer than Inter Miami. So there's a little bit of added, um, I don't know what you want to call it, spice or intensity. Cause we played them a couple of times in preseason. So I think that'll be there just natural because of the proximity, but I don't think there's any like real rivalry because the clubs don't play in the same league. And I was curious cause I started this English channel, because like, mm -hmm. I, I, I got a, a for Portuguese language channel. Yeah. And then unfortunately I had the chance to talk to a lot of Brazilian guys in the MLS and the USL. Mm -hmm. And in English, I was thinking to first talk to foreign guys in, 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 in this USL and this MLS environment. Mm -hmm. How did that come to you? I mean, you, you come, uh, you, you're born from in Nigeria, right? Yeah, yeah. Did so... you grow in, in the US? Yeah, yeah. So I was born in Nigeria and I actually moved to the U.S. right before my 10th birthday. Um, so it's been 17 years since I've moved to the U.S. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, my, my household, my mom, my family, we kept all our Nigerian traditions. I'm very, very proud of Nigeria, my country and where I'm from. Um, it's something that I wear on my sleeve. So, yeah, I do. I do consider myself a foreigner in the U.S., but I've been here for so long that a lot of, uh, I guess, the American culture, um, is natural to me because just because i've been here for so long but i very very much identify um with my nigerian side as well and how about soccer wise i mean nigeria is quite strong in soccer as well right yeah yeah i mean you, uh, you, you said you left the country at the age of 10 but mm -hmm. did you get some i don't know nigerian style and how oh yeah absolutely uh, that the thing is back home in nigeria everyone plays soccer when you're a kid there's not one kid that doesn't play soccer. Like if you want to have friends, if you want to be popular, if you want to connect with people, it's through soccer. Like soccer brings a whole nation together. So that's where I learned the game. That's where I got my passion from the game. A lot of things that I learned were grew up were, were from me playing in the streets um, in Nigeria and growing up with my, my older brother as well, running around playing in the streets. That's where I got my passion for the game. Um, and it's actually funny and interesting because in Nigeria, there's a when I was growing up at least, there's a big like love for Brazil like Brazilian soccer, Joga Benito. Um, so growing up, it was watching a Brazilian national team as well, too. And, and those players, Naz Nazario Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Roberto Carlos, Cafu, um, Lucio, Juan, all those guys, like that was that was it for us. We loved watching them play so much because they had so much style and flair in the way they played, so. Yeah, Brazil has inspired a lot of people probably 10 years ago. Now things have changed a little bit. We got better goalkeepers and better defensive midfielders, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, things have changed a lot. Yeah. And, and this is funny because at that time, at the time you were, let's see, you're 26 right now. Nigeria mm -hmm. had already some real good midfielders, uh, yeah, offensive yeah. midfielders as well, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, we had JJ Okocha, which is 
um, arguably the greatest player to ever come out of Africa. Actually talented. We had him, Kanu, who was like a forward attacking midfielder as well, too. A lot of good players. Yakubu was a striker. Um, Obafemi Martins. Um, the list goes on. The list goes on. How about the new generation, your generation so far? How do people feel about that in Nigeria and even yourself as a player? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a bit less entertaining, for sure. I would say that. Um, but I think we have more players who kind of have grown up abroad, um, played abroad, um, and coming back home to Nigeria to play. So like an Alex Owobi that plays for Everton, um, he's pretty much grew up in England his whole life and was in academies there. Now he's coming to play for the national team. Um, um, True Steve Kong, a center back who grew up abroad, um, Olaina. Um, and then we still obviously have guys like Wilfred Ndidi, who's Nigerian, but plays at Leicester in the Premier League and stuff. Um, and a Nacho, who's doing really well for Leicester as well, the striker. So it's a bit of a mix, it's a hybrid. I think we're kind of going through a little bit of a transition period right now. Um, but I do think the future is bright. We have some good young players. So we'll, we'll see how everything goes in the next couple of years. Yeah, I had the chance to talk to a Brazilian guy that plays in Nigeria. And he said, oh my God, these guys are really strong physically. Yeah, yeah. The game yeah. is very quick. Mm -hmm. I think it, it reminds a little bit of the U.S. soccer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very athletic, um, strong, fast. Not a lot of time on, on the ball. Um, so, yeah. And how was the adapt? How, how did you adapt to, to the, the reality in the U.S. as a player and as a person as well? Yeah, I think as a, pl as a person, for, first and foremost, before a player. Because um, the first couple of years I actually moved to the U.S., I didn't play soccer. Um, just because I was new. Um, I spoke differently. I wasn't. I didn't really know anyone. Where did you land in the US? Because you come from a huge city. Yeah, if yeah. I'm not wrong, you're from Lagos, right? Yeah, I'm from Lagos. But we came to New York, so it was it's actually oh, quite similar. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in New York, so I moved there. I didn't know very. I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't know how to start playing soccer. So I adapted a lot of things. The weather it was freezing cold when we came. <laughs> um, it was different. People spoke differently. People dressed differently. Um, everything was different. Um, so I had to adjust to that. It took it took me, not only me, but my family some time. And then when I started playing, it's just natural. I, I think football is a game that, um, especially as a kid at a young age, you're just having fun and enjoying the game, you know. Um, so that came naturally to me. I was just happy to be on the field and be able to express myself on the field, um, which I hadn't done for the last couple of years. So I think the adjustment period from that perspective was 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 very easy. And then when I got into the academy, New York Red Bull Academy, I think that's when the real adjustment started because the game became very real, became very real and very serious to me. Um, that's when, you know, you have guys who are 13, 14 years old and they're good enough to play with the pros, you know? So things became yeah. very, very intense. Yeah, I always say that New York Red Bulls, I've they have a 16-year-old kid that is, <laughs> I yeah. forgot his name, I think it's... Uh, I don't know. I can't remember his name, but he's a natural goal scorer at the age of yeah. 16. He's impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, they, they absolutely so much talent that came out of there. So much talent. Well, I think Bruno and some other players told me that there is the, all these, how can I say, the, the draft scenario for the soccer in the US is a bit different than in the others in other sports, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a little bit different. When you attended, an academy, was there an opportunity to, to remain at the club, to play there instead of going to university? Or was it an option for you? What yeah, your choice to go to Sydney Hall? Yeah, there was a small window, I think, at some point, because I actually went to university quite early. So I went when I was a freshman, I was 16 years old. Um, most kids start college at 18, 17, 18 range. 16? I started at 16. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> when I moved to the US, I got skipped a couple of grades because I was a bit ahead of oh. my peers. So. Um, yeah, so I think I had a little bit of window where it's like, oh, I, I trained with the reserve team at the time. I trained with the first team. Um, so the coach liked me. So I had a little bit of, oh, do you, you can stay and play another year of academy, train with the first team and see what happens. But it wasn't anything certain for one. And for two, my mom is all about education. My family always preaches education. So it, I didn't think for me personally, um, the best option was for me to go to college and accept the scholarship at Sino. Oh, you got the scholarship. I did, yes. That makes a lot of difference. This, I think this is the advantage of the U.S. slash Canada mm -hmm. market for most young kids, right? Because yeah. in, in, in countries like ours, we dream of becoming a soccer player, but mm -hmm. I mean, less than 1% ends up turning a, becoming a soccer player. So for sure, for sure. if you get the chance to mix it, to balance it with a good education mm -hmm. and a scholarship, right? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a, that's the thing with the U.S. And whenever I talk to kind of younger guys who are in between, um, I always make sure they they understand and, and and realize that the U.S. is the only country that gives you the opportunity to do both, right? And still have a chance to come out of college and be a pro, like a lot of guys. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity, um, and 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 I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have that. And well, I I talked to Bruno and other guys from Brazil. I, I don't see yet. Uh, many Brazilians in this NCAA market, or at least be not as outstanding as uh, as Bruno was, as mm -hmm. uh, uh, Andre Shinyashiki. But we, we know that in Brazil, have a lot of high, real good challenges uh, yeah. around the country. Is that the same reality for Nigeria? Um, I mean, do Nigerians go to the US to study and play soccer? No, 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 because I think. I think you, if, if it is natural for you to speak English, right? <laughs> it is. It is. So I think I think for Nigerians, for in Nigeria, um, to play soccer, it's more. If you have the opportunity to go to a foreign country, like a country like the U.S. or London, um, or um, England, sorry, or any of these countries, I don't think it's to play soccer if you're going. First and foremost is normally education. Because because it's more practical, right? It's more logical to go to school and study and get a job that's guaranteed versus going somewhere to go play. So I think a lot of people who do leave the U.S., do leave Nigeria and come to countries like U.S., they come to study. So you see a lot of Nigerians who are here um, that come here. And then there's the other chance that completely forego edu education and they want to play professional and they go all over the world. So I think those guys you don't find in the U.S. If they want to play soccer, they don't come to the U.S. They go to Europe, uh, mm. whether it's England, Denmark, anywhere, Iceland, you could think of. There's Nigerians there, Finland. Um, you know, Slovenia, Slovakia, wherever they go there. But if you're going to study, you come to the U.S. solely to study. That's kind of like a very ingrained Nigerian mentality. Maybe because they can start sooner in uh, these other leagues, as you mentioned, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the reward is bigger. Like in terms of you go to Europe and you play in Europe, you have a chance to become a bigger star, earn more money. Um, there's more prestige about it than when you come to the U.S., um, the MLS is it's growing and it's grown very well, but it's not the same as a Premier League or La Liga or one of those those leagues. So I think they opt for that and shoot for that rather than come to the US. And in the US, you play as a foreigner, or, or do you have a, a US citizenship as well? No, I'm a foreigner right now. I don't have um, I don't have a US citizenship. So I qualify something called DACA. Um, so it's pretty much if you've come to the country when you were young and essentially turned illegal for whatever reason, the government. Gives you a chance to like work and you know kind of have those benefits as well without oh, being you, a citizen. You, but you have this the residence and you can play. A, you you don't count as a, as a foreigner for the teams. So that's the tricky part because my my status is very very different. So I in the USL I don't count as a foreigner, but in MLS I do count as a foreigner because the rules are different. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a permanent residence. Like I couldn't I couldn't leave the country, go in and out as I please as a permanent resident. But when I'm here, I have. Like I can get a driver's license, I can work, obviously do all that stuff. This is interesting. So markets for, market for you at USL is actually bigger than the MLS so far, right? As a the what? You said the market? For you specifically? Yes, yes, yes. For me specifically, it's much bigger than USL than the MLS. Because you had the chance to play at the, MS, at the MLS, right? I, I had opportunities uh, in preseason trials. I was in a couple MLS systems. Um, it just never materialized. Um, whereby like I got offered a contract or anything, but um, yeah, it hasn't been the same um, for the USL. USL, I've, I've gotten more opportunities to actually play and kind of make my make, make a name for myself in the league. So what is the key, what is the biggest challenge for you this year as well? You got the whole, you followed every path of the natural system in the West and studying, attending an academy, going to a good mm -hmm. university, mm -hmm. playing at both at the, staying at both at the MLS and the USL, you told me you were you were playing at Birmingham Legion. You got mm -hmm. a new challenge in Miami. Yeah. At the age of 26, what do you have in mind? For me, I think at this age, uh, kind of a transition moment because now I'm starting to look around in the locker room and 26, 27, I'm one of the older guys in the locker room now. Um, Even at USL Championship. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of more because I, I this is my seventh year. My first year I was 20. Um, so I, I've kind of been around a little bit, and I think for me it's just um, kind of a being the best version I could I could be of myself as a player, um, wh wh whatever job I'm asked to do by the coach, um, being reliable every single day. I think that's a big part of it. 
And then two is kind of is leading by example um, and doing all the things that guys who are younger than me and guy who are, guys who are probably new to the league, whatever, can look at and say, okay, this is what I need to do to help the team and to attain success. And, and a big thing for me is I, I haven't I haven't a, achieved or won anything in the USL or gotten like quite far in the playoffs or something like that. Um, and I think no better time than now to start that, right? So that's a big goal for me. I want to kind of see how far I can take this thing and how far our team could do. We, we have the talent for that. So we'll see how it goes this year. Yeah, and now selling to guys on other conferences in USL. This year, both USL League One and USL Championship, uh, I, I, I see it's quite challenging to to predict which teams are going to reach higher levels. Do you have the same yeah. question? Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's probably like four or five teams that you always look at and say, okay, these guys are always in and around it. Um, kind of like a core group of teams in the USL, especially in the Eastern Conference. Um, but you just never know it's anyone's game, like, especially with the playoff format. It's just one game. If you get into the playoffs, you can win one game and go on a run and hit form. So you just never know. I think that's what makes the, the, the system in the U.S. a bit different than Europe. And maybe a, a tad bit exciting at times is the, the underdog and the dark horse can come out of nowhere and win and win games and kind of go on a run in the playoffs. Yeah, and we, we used to have that in Brazil and it was like a 10-year discussion whether we should, why Brazil had changed it from this tournament style to league style. Yeah. And I, I see something more emotional, but it's it, it's tough, right? Last season, yeah. for example, in the USL Championship, many first seeds, they lost in the first game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I think as a player, this should be this is really hard, right? Because <laughs> yeah, no, it's tough. It's tough because when you play in the league, like if you play 30 games or whatever, um, the best teams come out on top over 30 games, right? Just naturally, if you if you're a good team, you come out. But if you're playing one game in the playoffs, then it's anybody could be on in any day, and a couple mistakes, you just never know. You could go to penalties, and you never know. So. I think it makes it more unpredictable that kind of playoff structure. Yeah, because teams end up playing more defensively. They take yeah, less yeah. risks, and mm -hmm. there's a huge chance of going to penalty kicks, right? So, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And well, you mentioned you've been playing for seven years a professional so far, right? Mm -hmm. You, I, I, I always watch these college games, not only in soccer but other uh, sports as well. Mm -hmm. I get the impression that the teams that manage to go to the championship, the finals, players, they have more visibility. Do you have the same impression in soccer as well? Even though so that, the statistics what was the word you said? are better. You said, st you said stability? No, because, for example, if you, if you think about football, I was talking to Andre the other day, we had the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. Teams that manage to go to an NCAA championship or a conference finals, mm -hmm. players get more visibility. You mm. mentioned that at USL you didn't have the chance to go much further with the team, mm. even though mm. you, you played a lot of games. Do yeah. you feel the same way that it, it helps a lot on your visibility on being seen on for MLS teams, even though you have a lot of statistics, a lot of games? Yes and no, because I think I think yes, the teams that play longer, people tend to focus on them because Obviously, as a year goes on, less teams start to play, right? So there's less games to watch. So naturally, you watch the teams who are playing, right? Not only that, but they've made it far in the playoffs. So from that standpoint, yes. But I do think if you if you do well over the course of the season, people will take notice. Um, obviously, if you win, all the better. Everybody wants to watch a winning team, right? Everyone wants to see who's the, who, who are the guys contributing to a winning team on a daily basis. Um, they want to see that as well, and I think that helps. And it helps you, it helps you shine as a player. But I also think naturally, if you if you do well, um, there are enough eyes watching that that you would get the recognition. For example, my MFC, as you mentioned, that you were playing in Birmingham Legion, and they 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 was they were looking for you for a bit longer. How did they they see you? How did they evaluate you? Was that from Birmingham Legion Times or other soccer teams? Oh, Miami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was from before Birmingham Legion. I think probably from one uh, in Nashville. Or like 2018, um, I think they've been kind of talking to my agent to see where I wanted to go and all that stuff. So they just kind of kept up with me since then. So they they had known about me for a long time. Is there a, a specific team or statics in a game that would help your style of game? Um. Uh, oh, you're saying like a, a tactics that yeah. I prefer? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think I'm a player that I, I like to 
keep the ball. Um, so I like a lot of possession, possession style team, um, high pressing teams because I like to win the ball as well too. Um, so teams that um, go under pressure and teams that don't that are solid defensively. Like uh, I don't like to give up goals. It's something that I take pride in. So possession style team that doesn't give up goals. Um, that's kind of my that 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 would be something that will help my game. Yeah, because. At least on MLS, there are teams that like Toronto FC did they go crazy after a goal, but they concede a lot of them as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think for a defensive midfielder, this should be really tough, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't. How I, Miami I want to play this season because they used to be a very offensive team, right? Yeah, I think they're still offensive, but uh, um, trying to trying to focus a little bit more on the defense and control control spaces and not be so spread open um, for a counter attack and kind of control control. Have players who can put out fires and still attack with the ball, but defensively be a little bit more solid. Because last year, they, I, I think the feeling around it was that they gave up too many goals. Yeah, because it's a really entertaining map game to watch. All the mm -hmm. Miami FC games, all the Phoenix Rising games, but they yeah, sometimes yeah. concede goals that they, they should not, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for I, sure, for sure. I think this is the impression that I get that teams that are really good, mm -hmm. but some sometimes they lose games. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say by accident, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It winds up being if you're so offensive and you keep going, you leave gaps for a counter attack, and you wind up winning the game maybe four three five three on a good day. But then when you meet a good a good opponent that's good defensively, then it might not be the same, you know. And did my MMC change a lot from last season to this? Season? Yeah, yeah. They've only kept. I think they only kept about three or four guys from last Ooh. year's roster. So it's a complete clean out of everything. Um, I think the coach wants to play a different style. Um, so yeah. See how see see how, how how it goes. Well, I used to say to guys here in this channel that I always loved watching USL both League One and Championship because yeah. all the games used to be on YouTube internationally. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. at least in South America now it's exclusively on ESPN Plus. So nice. That's good. That's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's good for those who sign it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have do you have relatives in in Nigeria? They watch your game as well. Um, no, not my family's all over. I do have family in Nigeria. Um, but yeah, I, I have family in the US um, as well, too, that watch the game. So um, it, it makes it accessible for them because it's ESPN Plus as well. Yeah, on the internet. So it's quite easy. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, Blue, I, I cannot thank you enough because well, uh, I, I this is a brand new channel, right? Very yeah. few people watch it so far. I hope yeah. that in the future we say, "Oh, Bolu was talking to George, that crazy person." <laughs> dude. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure it'll take off. I, I appreciate you having me here. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, I like what you're doing here. This is really cool, and I think more people are going to find out. It's going to keep growing as long as you you keep doing what you're doing. Sure, sure. There are a lot, a lot of players, and the US the US market is interesting because it's very international. But I don't know if. International players get to get too much visibility in the West. Yeah, yeah, probably not. No, I don't think so. So this is this is why this is cool that you're doing this. Yeah, with the exception of, of some famous Mexican guys in Los Angeles area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. other ones, I don't think they are much seen. But yeah. this is why I created the channel as well for Brazilians and also guys from other countries, just like yours, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Balu. I'll try to watch your games, but I won't promise I'll be cheering for your team because I talk to a lot of USA <laughs> guys. I, I, I won't yeah. be lying. Otherwise, they'll yeah. be coming, oh, you're a liar. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. No, I appreciate <laughs> your honesty there. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but, but what I say is that I always support Brazilian projects such as okay. yours and Orlando City as well. So yeah. I hope they grow a lot. And Miami FC has always been a, a project to grow a lot, even though yeah. they were in a different league. Mm -hmm. But historically, they always plan to, to reach the higher level to be a huge club. Yeah. And well, yeah. you guys play at the bigger, one of the biggest stadiums of the league, right? Exclusively yeah. for soccer, right? Yeah. Oh no, no. Yeah. Is, is that that exclusively, right? No, the, the, it's a, it's you, a you share football it? stadium as well. Yeah, it's a football you share stadium. with UCF. No, you share with no, uh, FIU. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just a curi as a curiosity. Uh, they get to manage to to to, re to rename it for soccer games in the end. Yeah, they do. They do rename it for soccer games. Yeah. Oh, this is cute. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'll be watching you as well as Papa. Then end up becoming a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. If you get to refer it to other for other players, international players in the West, mm -hmm. it should be really good. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. I will. We'll stay in touch. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much, Balu. I'll be thank following you. you. Have thank a nice you, Friday. Man. I appreciate it. You too. Bye-bye.